So uh, Vivian Stoper, CEO of Hamilton, how are you, my friend? I'm very good, very good. And yourself? I have to say I'm good. Uh, I've been here in Singapore now for 13, almost 14 months, but uh, we are lucky um, that the situation is pretty much under control. And yesterday I had my second uh, injection for my vaccination. Ah, okay, you are lucky. So here it's still uh, for the older people here in, um, in Switzerland, so not yet, but they are opening uh, the thing, but we are same, same as you. So I didn't travel, I didn't move out of Switzerland since the uh, beginning of 2020. So looking forward to be able to start to travel around the world. Absolutely. Well, you know, in Singapore, they're also doing it for the older people first. You just don't know how old I am. Um, <laughs> That's maybe so you don't so you I'm don't make your age. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of history, one of my favorite watches pays tribute to your history in creating military watches for the U.S. Army, for the U.K. Army, and that is the Khaki Field Mechanical. Like anytime anyone asks me what's a great entry level watch that is extremely handsome, that's a real quality watch and has all the characteristics of a perfect, robust military watch and a great size also at 38, point, um, 38 mm in diameter and just over 9 mm in thickness. I always tell them the Khaki Field Mechanical. Tell me what this watch means to Hamilton. So it's it is for me the, that's the one of the icon of Hamilton. So we have many icon of Hamilton. Uh, we we are lucky to have almost 130 years of uh, of history. So we were born in 1892. But um, fully agree with you. The khaki field mechanical is something really special. So the whole uh, story of this khaki mechanical started uh, during the Second World War, where we were supplying the watches for the for the U.S. Army. So we were stopping. We stopped to produce watches for, for the end consumer, for the public, but only to supply uh, to supply the, the U.S. Army and the American soldier traveling around the world. So we produced more than one million watches at that time. And, um, and uh, it's part of our DNA, uh, that the core value of Hamilton. And we are proud to, to continue to be able to launch such product. And as you said, as a very affordable price, that's also the one of the added value of, uh, of Hamilton is to remain in our price segment. I can tell you it's not that easy. Uh, when, I, when I started 15 years ago for Hamilton, we were able to do automatic chronograph at about 1,000 Swiss francs. Nowadays, it's almost 2,000 Swiss francs. But uh, we, we have to continue to, to work hard to bring innovation and to bring something at a very, very attractive uh, price that the, that the objective of, uh, of Hamilton. You know, for me, Hamilton occupies a very special place in the watch industry. And to me, this is a lot to bridge for the next generation, right? Because I think it's super important that you can have amazing watches, beautiful design, no compromise in terms of quality, but at a price that's accessible even to young people. You know, a lot of times people say young people don't love watches. I would say it's because young people in general cannot afford really nice watches. But with this watch, it can be their first watch, a meaningful watch, a beautiful watch and a quality watch. Would you agree? I fully agree. So that's that's the chance of Hamilton once again. So it's on, on one side to gain this um, this public, this young generation that are very highly demanding in terms of product, in terms of character. And what is really interesting is that even if they are young, they still really looked into the, the history of the brand, the story behind the product. And uh, it's not a question of age. It's a question of uh, having something uh, in hand that talks to you. And um, and yes, we, we have product uh, quite uh, affordable at a good price for the young generation, but not only for the young generation, it's also for the older generation than uh, like you and me, where we already have watches, but we want to have something special for a specific occasion. And then we, we have the chance to play around with, uh, with Hamilton product and to have different type of product for different occasions. So, but I fully agree with you, uh, with, the, with the young generation, that's our core, uh, core uh, target group, I would say, and the uh, owner of Hamilton watches. You know, I completely agree with you as uh, an older person, as I mentioned, because I was eligible to get the vaccine in Singapore. Um, but this watch, the Kaki Field Mechanical, is still, still super appealing to me. Actually, a lot of your watches are still super appealing to me. And, you know, we're all dreaming of the time when we can travel again. But now when I travel, I mean, for various different reasons, partially because of what we've been through, but partially, of course, for a safety reason, I would prefer to wear a watch that's much more discreet and a watch that is uh, not flashy in terms of the total price that it costs. And I think, again, Hamilton, even for a guy my age in his early 50s, um, is a watch that I find very, very appealing and gives me great pleasure. How about yourself? 
Yeah, so, okay, I I wear only Hamilton watches, of course. Uh, today I'm wearing, um, so it's maybe a little bit more show-off, I would say, uh, that the new Ventura, uh, the Ventura skeleton uh, that I I took this uh, this morning, and um, but that's uh, but I agree with you. So it's a it's a it's a product. Watches remain an emotional product, so you need to have this connection with the with the product. It's not a question of price. It's not a question of uh, of cost or whatever. It's not a question of showing off or not showing off. But it's really the emotion that it gives you. Why you were you decided the, this morning to wear this shirt? It's it's for you. You decided for any specific reason on why I took this watch this morning. It's for my own specific reason that I decided to take this watch. On the, and yes, if you can take less risk uh, to be in trouble, if you have a Hamilton watch than any other uh, prestige brand, it's also something that nowadays counts as well. Yeah, it counts a lot. So let's talk about the new version of the Kaki Field Mechanical, and it is in bronze. Tell us why the decision to make bronze. So that's our first bronze. Huh? Uh, we see in the watch industry that uh, since four or five years, uh, there is already some uh, some brand that um, puts uh, bronze watches on the um, on the market. Uh, we wanted to do it as well a little bit earlier, but we 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 take time. Sometimes at Hamilton, we take time. We need to understand exactly what we want to to put, how we want to to put it in the market. So we decided to take uh, to take this khaki field because. Bronze is what made us are, are made of, and uh, that's something really that's a tribute to to you can make statue of uh, of bronze, you can uh, building, so that's something that lasts, and uh, that's why we decided to put in this uh, khaki field 38 millimeter uh, to create the link with the um, with the uh, with our heritage, with the with the army, with the uh, the American soldier of the of the Second World War, and uh, that's why we. We were ready this year to launch it with the anti uh, fingerprint uh, coating on the on the products uh, that will be and the product will be available in a in a couple of months uh, so in a uh, June twenty uh, second and uh, that's the whole story behind this uh, this uh, new product and uh, the idea we have as well is to really to have this patina to have this uh, with the bronze the bronze is evolving with time and. Uh, what else than taking the khaki field mechanical that had this strong history behind and that will remain uh, always in our collection as well in the future. And we wanted, that's why we chose this product for the for the bronze. Yeah, I think it's what's really cool about this watch is even though it begins as a uniform product, right? So all the watches are the same. Immediately as the watches start to patina, each of them become individual and it's all based on the interaction with the, the owner. So I like that also and I would imagine it appeals to people from the younger generation who are much more individualistic as well to have something that is only uh, a watch that is aged according to your life with the watch. And I think that's quite charming. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. So that's uh, uh, we are not in a. Um... In a, in a way, telling people to clean it and to keep the watch as it is, because it's a, it's something that will evolve according with your way of using it uh, on your daily uh, behavior, on where you go. It depends on the humidity. The the oxidation will be different anyway in Singapore or in Switzerland, and that's also the beauty of the um, of the thing is to have this this watch getting this patina and changing, evolving with the with the time. Excellent. And uh, this is therefore a, a alloy of copper and tin that creates a fast patina. Is that, am I correct? So it will start the patina almost immediately after you get it. Yes. Yes. So it will start from day one. That's also the, um, the challenge that we have. I mean, we, we, we made some research. We have already some product that we are checking a little bit how they evolve, but we can see that it depends. It depends on uh, many different things on the, um, on the people uh, themselves as well, on the contact with the, uh, with the hands as well. And that's also why we decided to have this in a mechanical, because you have to, you have to touch it. You need to have this connection with the product. So, we, we don't ask the people, clean it, don't touch your product, because we put it in a mechanical where you have to touch it, and we know that it will accelerate the oxidation of the product, but that's exactly what we want. We want that it makes one with the owner on the, on the product. So that's, uh, that's the, whole I, the, the whole idea behind. That's really cool. And I love the fact that a uh, watch is this over 800 US dollars. First of all, you have a, a bronze case. You have a great movement, the H50, which has got three days of power reserve as well, but you also have a titanium case back. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? 
Yeah, so we, uh, yes, yeah, so the price remains a Hamilton price, uh, uh, of course, and um, and um, we have a titanium um, case bag, but also the, the buckle. The buckle is also in titanium. Um, we decided to put it um, for some different reasons, but the contact with the skin uh, long uh, the whole day, we wanted to avoid it. And that's why we decided to put a titanium uh, case back to not to accelerate too much uh, the, the oxidation uh, with the contact of the, of the skin, because we know all these uh, factors are accelerating and making potentially the, the, um, the case evolving differently between the case back and the, the rest of the watch. So that's why we, we decided to put the, the titanium uh, for medical and uh, design reason. So that's, uh, that's how we came out with this, uh, with this product. Well, that's amazing. And we're very excited because we are launching this watch in our eShop as well on the, the 22nd of June. So thank you so much for that collaboration. Um, and I think it's a great watch. You know, a lot of people would be interested now to have a bronze watch. Uh, and you can at a completely accessible price point with no compromise in terms of quality. I love the use of the titanium case back. And as Vivian pointed out, the, the titanium buckle as well. Um, it's just a great first bronze watch, or even if you love bronze and just want to get another one, um, just to have something to wear, you know, that you, didn't, you don't really worry about that much, but is super handsome. As you said, you develop an emotional relationship with. Maybe the last question I should ask you, Vivian, is uh, one of the watches that you created has become like an object of cult devotion. And that is the PSR. Do you have any plans for uh, bringing back new versions of this watch? Ha! It's a little bit too early, uh, but thank you for asking the question. So the PSR uh, was was an interesting story as well. I mean, we launched it in 2020, uh, which was a great, great, an amazing success. But uh, you know, uh, sometimes you don't know how the market will react. You don't know how the audience will uh, react. So it was difficult to know if we have to produce few thousands, few hundred of these watches. And uh, now it took us at the end of the day, eight months to cover the the request of uh, of the people. So very, very successful. And uh, we made the mistake 50 years ago to, to abandon or to let it go. And... Uh, we never do twice the same mistake, so <laughs> stay tuned. Yes, we will have. Uh, we will, there is other stories to write with the with the PSR, and we are working on it. There is still different options where to go, uh, but uh, yes, it uh, it's not a one shot, so it will be part of the collection in the future. Well, I happen to own the gold version of that, uh, and I absolutely love that watch. Uh, I know Adam Kraniotis, uh, our editor at large in the United States and the founder of Red Bar, is always posting his pictures of that watch. And I love like how it's, you know, it's a digital watch. In fact, it was the first digital watch, you know, luxury digital watch. And now everyone who even loves mechanical watches loves that watch too. Why do you think there's this crossover appeal? Well, that's, that's the beauty of Hamilton once again. I mean, the first digital watch was done by, uh, by Hamilton. The first electric watch with the Ventura in uh, 1957 was developed by, uh, by Hamilton. And, um, and that's our objective as well. I mean, uh, we are working with a very small team here at, uh, at Hamilton and dedicated to create as well story for the futures. I have the luck as CEO of Hamilton to be able to to look behind and to see and to inspire ourselves for the for the development of our novelties and our work is to give something for the future generation um, as well uh, to as a source of uh, of inspiration. So I think it all goes together. It's uh, you, we come with new material, bronze, as we were talking today. Uh, we come with new technology. We have a, a new caliber that we launched as well this this year with the chronograph. Uh, hand winding. So that's uh, that's the thing of Hamilton, where there is so many out there to about innovation. That uh, stay tuned because next year is our as well our 130th anniversary. So we have to come with a few cool new things. I can't wait. Well, my friend, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'm wishing you all the best. Thank you. Take care. I'm looking forward to see you in Singapore, in Switzerland, or wherever. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Vivian. Awesome. Bye.